let us know if you're if you have never been on one of my $7 calls, you're in for a treat. Let me know because like I brought in one of my favorite jam partners, Mr. Vince Reed. And I'll let him introduce himself because I know I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it justice, but guys like this guy, like I've been jamming with him now over the last several months and I have learned so much. And yesterday, this guy had me on a mastermind call with Mr. Billy Jean. Him and Billy are I, I, Vince. You've worked you've worked for Billy Jean before, right? That's I would no, I never worked for Billy. He would just bring me on to do some consulting stuff for their company, and then um, we just kind of hooked up, became friends. This is kind of how it worked. That's awesome. Yeah, Victor was there. Victor was there. He's 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 in that mastermind with me. Um, we're going to, you guys are going to learn a little bit more about that. And it's, don't worry, it's not a high ticket offer. We're not here to sell you anything. We're really today together to give you guys some value. Like there are so many people here that are having issues with getting conversions, whether that is getting people from the ad to your landing page, from getting the people from opting in to your webinar, to your VSL, or just conversions in general. So it doesn't matter whether you you know, are here because you have a call funnel, whether you have a low ticket funnel, everyone here today is going to get some value because Vince has ran millions and millions of dollars worth of ads. And so we're literally going to go over like, what should be we looking for KPIs right now? What sh who should be running VSLs? Who should be doing this? Who should be doing that? We're going to answer a lot of those questions today. Okay. Vince, so just, just tell them a little bit about, I, I, I'm pretty sure everyone here knows who you are, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and let you intro and then we'll just, we'll just get right into it. Well, first off, thank you for having me. Um, really, really honored and blessed to be here. You're one of my favorite marketers as well. I tell you that all the, all the time. There's not a lot of people that I will actually call with questions about advertising. And, uh, and Laurel's one of them. So you guys have a fearless le leader. She's amazing. Listen to everything that she says. And, and, and this is how you know you've got a good per leader teaching you. It's if they're still learning and they're still actively running ads. That's, the, that's literally the test. If they're actively learning and they're still actually in the, you know, running the ads, they don't have someone else running the ads and they're just the face, uh, that's how you know. So um, again, thank you so much for having me. I, I really appreciate it. Um, yes, yeah, so you know, I got started in digital marketing back in 2008. I was in real, in the real estate industry. It collapsed, and I did a little search online how to make money on on the internet. Um, and um, actually, I was looking for a sales job because I my real estate market collapsed. To be to be honest, and then I went on Craigslist, went into the little click sales, and there was an ad that said "Make money on Google." I clicked on it, and it sounded better than flipping burgers. So. I just kind of found myself in the rabbit hole searching and, you know, from one thing to the next, found a mentor and that's kind of where it started running ads. So, um, you know, I've been doing this a long time. I, I like to consider myself a dinosaur. And what I mean by that is there weren't all the cool tools and there weren't people like Laurel and God forbid teaching you everything for $7. I mean, you had to drop like three, four, five grand to learn anything. And in fact, the way I learned, the guy was like, hey, um, I'll teach you how to make money, but it's $2,000 like for you to, you have to get my direct sales thing and then I'll teach you some ad stuff. So it was a lot different. So, um, you know, my specialty has been lead generation since then. And, uh, you know, since then I've, you know, had several companies. I sold a company, I think back in 2012 and then um, launched an agency. And now, you know, my new software company, eBooth. It's just been a roller coaster. There's a lot of failures and ups and downs, more failures. Um, then ups <laughs> along the way since then. So that's that's kind of my story and I'm sticking to it. But um, <laughs> yeah, I just I just um, appreciate you having me here. And, you know, from a lead generation perspective and marketing, it's 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 what I love. Um, you know, my book, Internet Traffic and Leads that I, that I wrote, you know, several years ago was kind of my way to kind of share all the things that, that work. And those things continue to work to this day. They're just kind of evolving. And that's kind of what we're here to talk about today. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. You did you did that way more justice than than I would. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, like I said, Vince is one of my favorite people. As a matter of fact, like if you go into, I'll actually I'll actually show you guys this really quick. Like Vince is one of the people that like helped me like with this. He he helped me build this like little ad set right here. Like look at this, two thousand six hundred and thirty five purchases at eleven dollars and nineteen cents a purchase. He helped me launch this what. How long ago was this fence? Like what, last year? Yeah, it was a while ago. It's still, it's still <laughs> killing it. 
And like, like every, and actually yesterday I was so lucky. Billy Jean gave me a couple of um, suggestions too, to try with open targeting. I couldn't even wait while the mastermind was going on. I was literally in my ads manager. I'm like, don't mind me guys. I'm like, I had to go do this, but like you guys can see, like, look, it's, I'm, I always show you guys my ads manager. Look at this. I'm at over $2 million. Look at this 93,000. I still have not spent a hundred thousand dollars on freaking ads. So everything that I'm teaching you guys in this program, look at this offer ads, your retargeting ads, power content. Like there is nothing that like, I, I show you guys my ads manager all the time. There's nothing in this program that I am not personally running myself or that Vince has like helped me. Like it's like everything here is everything that I am doing. So there's not like this bait and switch where, oh, well, Laurel's still not doing this or Vince is even like still doing this to to like, like he's got, he's got a company set up my ads. It's awesome. Um, he, like I said, we're going to talk about a little bit about eBooth because I know a lot of you guys are running VSLs and webinars. We're going to show you how freaking cool Victor saw this yesterday, but we're going to show you how really cool. Like if you guys love my on platform actions, you know, like with the power content and being able to retarget, imagine being able to get someone to watch one video and being able to retarget them on Pinterest, on Twitter, on YouTube, on Google, on TikTok. Okay. Like imagine that it's like my power content strategy on freaking steroids, but we'll get, that's a little teaser. We're going to get into it because I know so many people right now are really frustrated because they can't get their ads to convert. So we're actually going to start, right? We're going to go through an entire funnel, but right now let's go ahead and Vince, if you, you, you run a lot of ads, I run a lot of ads. Um, my students run a lot of ads. I've got a lot of data. Let's just like you're running one kick-ass ad right now. How many of you guys have seen Vince's brick wall ad? Like it is everywhere and it is so well done. So what are some of the, the, the things that you're noticing Vince among your students, you know, among your clients, what are the, the categoristics of, and similarities between all of the ads that are performing really well for you guys right now? Yeah. So, okay. So can I back up a little bit? Absolutely, please do. So let me, let's let's back up a little bit. And this is my guarantee and promise to you guys. So I see there's a lot of you guys here. My guarantee is that I'm gonna I want to help you, and you guys will let me know if if what I share today will give you a minimum of six figures worth of value from this time here. So this is 30 minutes to an hour. If at the end of this you could get off and say I could use that to earn an extra six figures, would it be worth you showing up? And the reason I do that is I believe that. First, I'd love for you guys who have no cameras on, turn them on, come come in and, and get in the game. That's number one. But number two, um, you know, luck is not something that just happens by accident. Okay, luck is something that you create. I'm sure that you thought about clicking on the link to come here this morning. Some of you were like, I don't know if I should do it. Some of you did. Some of you are like, gosh, she's making me turn on the camera. But how would I ever recognize you? If I ever saw you out, like, I don't, I, right now you're just a name on the thing. So my point in sharing you that is, is, is if depending on where you are to get in the game, you kind of have to show up and you've got to, obviously you've heard the same before, get comfortable being uncomfortable, right? So that being said, more is a mindset thing, but stepping back a little bit from an ad perspective, like, I think that if you think of advertising like this, it'll make the whole process easier. So how many of you guys ever saw the movie Wall Street, the old school movie, Wall Street? Uh, Gordon Gecko, one of my favorite movies of all time. All right. So Gordon Gecko, Laura, have you ever heard me tell this story I'm about to share? The Gordon this is Gecko. Completely, this is completely new to me. So okay. So this is this will help you with ads. All right. So Gordon Gecko, okay, in the movie, he was a, in a billionaire, right? And one of the ways that he got there was by leveraging inside information to make trades, pretty much the way a lot of people still do to today. But that's what he was doing in the movie. So he could take, he would get some information on like a CEO's getting fired from a company like in two weeks and be able to position his trades to be able to benefit from that. So why am I sharing that with you? Today in advertising, specifically with the way Laurel is teaching you, okay, I don't, I don't think that we are quite understanding the power of the information that you have before you even start running the ads. So for example, let's just take Laurel's power content idea. Right. If somebody's watching 50% or 75% or 95% of a video, if Gordon Gecko had that information, know, knew what you watched and how long 
you watched it for, he'd make billions off of it. Like some of you guys are just thinking, oh, I'm gonna build an audience and do some power content. Like you're not thinking deeper. Like when you think this way, and this is how I think about marketing, it helps you create better content and better power content and better ads because you're like, I know that if they watch 50% or 75% or 95% of this, they're more likely to buy my thing. Okay, it's, it's, it's like, it's almost like you're a psychic. How do you think those psychics get paid? They, you walk in, they look at your ID and they know where you're from and they use that little bit of information and you walk out thinking that they knew everything about you, right? Maybe some of them really have that power. I don't know, I don't really believe in all that. But anyhow, my point is they have enough to make a lot of people convinced based off the little information they can gather from you. Do you realize that you have that in advertising? Raise your hand, and honestly, I'm being serious. Like, raise your hand, and, and again, I see Craig, I don't see your picture, Melody. Tell me, does that make sense? Gordon Gecko would take that information and make billions. You have more information than he could ever dream of when running ads, if you set it up and you think about advertising in that way, all right? So how do you do that with an ad? When I look at, that's how I look at ads in the beginning, right? So you talk about the slap ad, right? <laughs> So the reason why I knew that ad would work and there was more elements to that, I'm mostly targeting people that advertise with that ad. And what do most people that advertise use when they run an ad? Do they use brick wall pages when they're running ads? A brick wall page, by the way, is a one page website okay, that you put in front of a webinar or a VSL. It's an opt-in page. I just call it a brick wall page, okay? So if I'm running an ad targeting advertisers, to a page that is using something that I know that they use, okay? That allows me to get an edge, right? Inside information, the Gordon Gecko effect of where that person is, what that person is thinking and what I need to do next, all right? So let's just start from the beginning of your framework, Laura, with power content, yep. right? So the way that I look at power content, me specifically, and this is, again, this is fresh in my mind from yesterday, is when I make a webinar, typically what I'm doing is I'm identifying problems, okay? I'm proving that problem to be true. And then I'm telling you that my product, my product is the solution to fix that problem. Your power content is simply that problem, proving it to be true and how to fix it. And then linking it to your thing of like, basically how you can eliminate that forever. So when I'm thinking of power content, I'm like, okay, this is what I have to offer. This is what I have to sell, okay? what? kind of video five minutes in length long that can I create that I know that if somebody watched 25 50 percent 75 percent or 95 percent of that video okay they're more likely to be interested in my product or service I'm not just let me go create some content that makes sense let me go just add try to add value no I'm thinking specifically like if I knew for a fact okay that the people that watched 75% of this video, it would give me a strategic edge to do whatever I choose to do moving forward. Like what kind of advantage would I have? And sometimes I might have to back up for a day or two and just write down every piece of idea and problem on the board until I get the one and say, how can I truly structure this? With that being said, let me give you a framework on how I did this literally yesterday after our call. Cause I knew I was coming on and I, and I like to give practical stuff. Like you said, like, what am I actually doing? So. I have a YouTube channel and on my YouTube channel, I do these ad roulette episodes, okay? So these ad roulette episodes is where I basically look at people's ads and, I, and then I see where the ad takes them and I, and I critique their ads in their funnels, all right? My version of power content on YouTube is I take those ad roulette ads and I run those ads to who? Advertisers, people running ads on Facebook or looking up videos on Facebook and looking up how to run ads on Instagram or Facebook ads. So it makes, makes sense, right? If you're running ads on Facebook and you're running ads on, in, on Instagram, if you land on a video where it's like, hey, I'm Ben Street, I'm gonna critique these ads, I'm gonna critique these funnels, and this is the framework I'm using, okay? I already know that I'm, I'm winning half the battle, especially if they get through that, through that video. Now this strategy, although I'm, I'm talking about it on YouTube, it's the same thing with power content on Facebook. It's how I'm thinking about it, right? So the way I used to do it in terms of the video I shot yesterday, I did not have a framework that I was following. I was not asking the audience to engage. I was basically like, if you go look at the episodes, I haven't released this new one that I'm saying now, but if you look at the past ones, I was just saying, looking at these ads and critiquing them. Now I'm thinking about it differently. I'm like, okay, how can I actually make this content more sticky and more beneficial and useful 
and then at the end have a clean segue to whatever it is that I'm offering. So I created this framework around how I actually look at ads and I created a framework on how I actually look at these funnels. And when the video starts, I go, here's my framework on how I look at ads. Here's my framework on how I critique funnels. And what we're gonna do on Ad Roulette is we're gonna just scroll through the newsfeed. Every third or fourth post is an ad and we're gonna use this framework and follow. And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And you tell me, if you think that I did the right thing, if I critiqued it right or right or not, right? Getting them to engage, right? Sticky content. And then at the end of that eight minutes or so of me critiquing these, then I can freely just talk about my offer. At that point, I say, listen, if you notice all of these uh, ads and funnels look like this, I suggest if to really optimize these things, there's something else that they all could do. And that's leverage IB IBC campaigns or use my company. I can freely get into my offer and talk about it freely. I gave them the value. Right now, that's that's my way of doing it. So my point is that I'm bringing all this full circle. Is if you're using power content, okay, what? How does that power content correlate with giving you an advantage once they actually watch through it? Because I think some people would take that and say, I'm just going to create a video and hope that like they watch it. And if they watch 50%, great, they watch 50%. Or you can look at it like I put these these things strategically in this video. I know for a fact that they watch 50%, they got this kind of information. And again, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. So I'm gonna stop there and just kind of starting back from the beginning of like, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. And that's literally the difference between individuals that are crushing it versus everyone else that goes, I did that, I did that. How many of you, when you started with Laurel, like I already tried Facebook ads, it didn't work. I did that, I did that. But then you get in and you look at all the strategic things that she does. And that's proof that it's not what you do, it's how you do it. So I'll stop there before the next step, but I just wanted to kind of throw that out there to get you, I think ads more than I do ads, if that, if that would be answer your question. Yeah, that is great because I think so many people when they're approaching the ads, they're so focused on, I should follow this formula. Like I had someone that was in messenger that my assistant sent me and she's like, how do I answer? How do I answer this question for this guy? I was like, well, just send them to the Ask Laurel because I'm gonna cover it on Friday. And he was asking me, he was going through my, my ad library on my, on my page, right? And he was like, well, why are you doing this when you tell us to do this in the program? It was because when you look at someone's ad library, you don't have the context behind who they're targeting. And he was looking at my warm ads as if I was going to a cold audience. And so just to bring this a, li a little bit like full circle to as per what Vince was just talking about is... We have to understand where is our audience right now? And even take a step back, where were they five minutes before they even saw this ad? What were they doing? What were they thinking? So many of you guys are so focused on what formula do I use? What do I do? When really, it is really as easy as just grabbing their attention and telling them what you need, what they need to hear. And then getting them to do whatever action that you want, whether it is if you're running cold and you need more conversations, that's a value bomb. If you don't need more conversations and you just have an offer like Vince, Vince doesn't want to sit there on, on messenger and having conversations all he doesn't need to be right. He's got the traffic. So he's utilizing his power content to go straight to an offer, but you have to understand what do you need at that point in time? And more importantly, what does your audience need at that moment that they're seeing that ad? Because a lot of you guys are just picking and choosing like, well, I'm going to pick this script and I'm going to choose this part of my offer. And you're just like throwing a video out when you really have to think about what does this person that I'm targeting actually need to see so that I can show them cooler things later. Does that make sense? Everyone understand what we're talking, what we're talking about? That was, a, that, that was such a great, I'm, I'm, I didn't mean to interrupt Vince. Like we can. No, no, uh, that's, that's what, does anybody have any questions on that? I don't know. Do you take, do you take Q and A here? I don't know if I'll do them right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If anyone has so, any questions, just right here. Yeah. On how you could actually make that practical. Cause for me, I don't want to sit here and just preach to you guys. Like this is really, you guys are here. This is for you. Right. So is there anybody that has a question on how we can help you think more about how you're structuring your ads? I'll tell you when I'm doing my power content, I'm thinking like they're, in my mind, there are many webinars. Mm -hmm. I would, I would, I would think, and, and when I do a webinar, when I go to speak on stage, you know, I've spoken at some really cool events, right, with you know thousands and thousands of people. When I go in that into speak at any event, the only there's only one thing in my head. I want to make sure that anybody that paid money to be at this event left with something useful and beneficial that they can leave right now and go get results. 
I want them to remember my talk. How many times have you been to an event? And you're like, oh, this is just a pitch fest. I didn't get any value. And you end up in your room or at the bar the whole time. I have been at events like that. So I'm like, if they come to my talk, okay, they're going to leave out of here. Like, I, I'll, I'm glad I paid because I came and I, and I got that information, right? That's how your power content should be. I think some people just create power content because Laurel said created power content. <laughs> they're not like thinking like, how do I get someone to watch that video? And they're like, man, I got something really useful and valuable from that content. Like, how can I get more? Right? And if you know your audience, if you write down, like the number one thing you can do for your business and is write down what you're selling and write down every single objection that someone could potentially say about your product or service or what you're offering, even the, like the most ridiculous thing, write them all down. Cause that'll give you, cause those, cause those objections are things that are happening inside your prospect's mind. And what sometimes people will think their product doesn't sell, but it simply hasn't addressed an objection that could have easily been answered that would have made them get over the top and, and actually like move the needle for them, if that makes sense. All right. So does anybody have a question or how can how they can use what we just talked about or figure out a way to create better content and how they can structure it more like kind of like a mini? You already have great frameworks. If you just follow it and just I think that will be fine. But any, any questions I can answer, you want me to move to the next step? Yeah, I see I see Billy has a question. And I think I believe you guys have like had drinks together before, I think. Um, but one of the things like that, like all of you guys are sitting here in this room right now because you either had one of two objections. One, you didn't believe that you could run cheap advertising and actually get results. Or two, you didn't think that you could run your own ads, right? I did. I focused on how could I prove that you really can get great results with $5 ads. And I did prove that, Hey, you can run your own ads. That those were the two major objections, because if I can't convince you of those two things, none of you guys would be sitting in the room right now. Right? So think about that. Like, what is it that your audience is like fighting with? You could have the best offer in the world. This, this program is only $7 a month. But if I can't convince you guys of those two things, it's worthless. I won't make any money. So you have to think about like, what, what, do, what does my audience, what do I have to convince my audience of in order for them to buy my thing? You can have the best offer in the world with the best price point, but if they don't believe that will actually work for them, you won't pay, right? Mr. Billy, Mr. Billy Big Shot. What's up, Laurel? How you doing? Hey. hey, what's up, Vince? Uh, what's up? We, we met online a couple of years back, but now, okay. I'm, you know, I did a, a shift uh, in the music space and stuff like that. But, you know, for 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 what I'm selling, so I'm selling beats to uh, music artists, which when I'm creating uh, power offer content, some of it is like showcasing, showcasing some of the music, showcasing some of the beats and stuff like that. What's your take on uh, some of that and maybe like a different approach that you might take when it comes to serving an audience like this, being a, a media buyer like you are. Right. So one of you, do you know Tuan, the beat maker? Tuan may be by face. I would have to look him up. Yeah, he was one of our clients. He has in the same industry. So cool. okay. um, yeah, I mean, okay. So I have two kids and when they are, they every single year, well, at least my, my youngest son, they have like a day where it's show and tell, right? and they bring a toy to school. And that day, they're the most popular kid in school. Why? Because they showed a, a toy, show and tell. Show and tell. Play show and tell. Show them making beats. Show them the beats. How you like show them a little bit. It's literally show and tell. Right, right. And okay, I wish cool. I could have a more profound way to say it, but that's literally what you have to do. Same thing with me. Software, show and tell, show them how it works. Just show and tell. Perfect, yeah. That, that's kind of what I'm already doing. Just wanted to hear your take well, on that. You're on the right track. I think, the, and then I would just take it, maybe create a framework behind it. Yeah, like some of it, some of it I'm just like, you know, playing the beat in the relatable environment. Some of it is I, I'm breaking down the actual uh, instrumental. Like I started with a piano and then I uh, add the kick drum and all that good stuff. And then right. some of it so, is, you know, helping them with some of the stuff that can, 
help them promote their music. So, yeah. Exactly. So with you, I would create a framework behind what you just did. So the first thing I do is I create this. Then that's what you hear here. Second one, and then when you do it, when you show and tell, you just break down and show them the framework that you followed in doing that. Awesome. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, back before I even started my business, I was, a lot of you guys know I worked in television. A lot of you guys don't know I was a musician. I was in a band. And I, a couple of you guys actually saw this, but um, cause I, cause everyone was like, well, how, if I'm a musician, how do I do power content? I literally got like our, our, our favorite fans that showed up to every show with a freaking telephone, shot some interviews after the show when they were all pumped up, ready to go. And I asked, I said, why should a venue book Mrs. Howell on their next show? And then I edited in a whole bunch of fun shots of us playing, but I used the studio recording so that the, the, the recording was, was cool, but it was a three minute video. It had fans being like, Mrs. Howell's awesome. You know, like, I like come here because Laurel shreds and, you know, Chelsea does this and, and it's, it's a fun, like everyone that that's power content. Like what Vince just said, show and tell. Sometimes it's not about us, like specifically, but like, how can we convey to our audience? And it doesn't matter like what niche you're in, like, right. I was in a band. And I ran that as an ad. How do you think we got, I got my, uh, my band booked. I ran ads locally, built up our audience with that one ad that I just shot with my freaking phone like eight years ago. Think about the quality of that. But that's what I ran every time my band had a show. We, we did a tour one time. I ran that video in all of the cities that we were playing. Venues loved us because they loved that we were showing and telling before we even got there. So this, this, this doesn't just apply to like internet marketing. Like this applies to everything. Like we have to think about like our, ourselves as like, what do we need? What do we need to show our audience right now to prove that we are who we say we are, right? We can say, I could say we're a fun band, but they're not going to, they're not going to be convinced of it until they actually see it. I see there's a couple of questions. Miss Patty. Hey, Laurel and Vince, thank you. Um, my question is about service-based businesses <clears throat> because I do, specifically, I do uh, strength-based leadership training for companies and school administrators. So what would be your best advice for that? I'm, I've been trying to really nail down a power offer for that. Yeah, so when you're teaching these administrators on, on how they, and you're talking about like, in, you said in school systems, like, like what type, what level, like high school, college, like, or is this different? Um, high school and college. Okay. Yeah. So I would just start giving away little pieces of these frameworks of leadership. So like, for example, I'm sorry, I do a lot of stories. I hope you guys don't mind. So like, okay. if you guys, you guys all know Tony Robbins, right? And I'm sure that you've seen his talks everywhere. And I'll have these little segments of whatever, and some of them are mindset, some of them are business, some of them are cursing you out, some of them are all over the place, right? But people still pay him hundreds of thousands of dollars for that same stuff that's everywhere. So what you have to be willing to do is give away some of those frameworks that they can easily implement to see a result. Okay. I think that what we are afraid to do is we think one, okay, here's the biggest myth. We as entrepreneurs think that if we share something online, that everyone sees it, which isn't the case. And we believe that if we share enough of our good stuff online, that nobody would pay us for like that service. And we were talking about this yesterday, right? Well, people are going to pay you to help you execute and implement those leadership principles into the schools. So what I would start doing is breaking down several frameworks. Like I might create some pillars, right? So again, it could be mindset, it could be for the, for the faculty, for me having hosting meetings and how to not have company, uh, what do you call it? Where people inside the company start competing against each other, how to get them all to work together, like all yeah, these yeah. frameworks, right? Like, and you just start teaching these, like little principles and how they can fix these things. And if you'd like, and at the end of those, if you'd like for us to show you how we incorporate all of these types of principles into your school, and like it's giving it away is essentially what it is. That makes sense. And I think what happens is it gets difficult because you're almost afraid to share that stuff because you're like, well, that's what they're going to pay me to do. Right. So then you don't want to give all the good stuff. And Laura, I know for a fact, I've seen your videos where you literally say, give, I give away everything. And then I do. you guys are all still here. Right. 
minutes. And, and I think that's the way that it is. Because people, what people are really paying for is speed. Like people want to get things done quickly. They don't really want to like have to figure it out. You know, like for example, a lot of times people are afraid of charging and they're like, well, you can get that on uh, information for free. Well, the reason you're here is because Laurel's packaged it in a way where you can just easily go through it and get the answers you need and go off and get results. Or you could just go Google it and try to figure it out and put all the pieces together. Okay, one's going to take you 10 years, one's going to take you two days. People are paying for speed, right? So when you give it all away, hey, it's, here's, if you like this piece of content and this structure on how to fix your organization, okay, you love how I teach you how to do this and 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 how to do this to help your organization. You can definitely book a call and connect with me and we'll show you how we can quickly get into your, your system, your school system and help you get this done in the next 30 days. That's what they're paying for speed. They're not really, pay, in my opinion, paying for all of the stuff. They like it. They just want to get the result quickly. I always tell you guys, there's no difference between the content that's on my YouTube channel than this program and my Lean on Laurel program. And there's a couple of Lean on Laurel students in here right now that will tell you. There is nothing that no one has access to for free that I sell. I don't sell information. I sell time with me. Like a lot of you guys need to let go of like the fact that like, oh, this is my proprietary, like, you know, I don't want, I don't want other people to see what you're doing. You're not doing anything that's, so I guarantee you there's 10 other people who are doing there and giving it away for free. <laughs> like I, I always tell, I always tell people the more that we can show what we do and how we do it, it gives the, the, the buyer, the prospect more clarity on what they're actually buying, right? Like, I, like if I didn't show what my strategy looked like, a lot of you guys wouldn't be here because you wouldn't know what, what my personality was. You wouldn't know like my style of, of strategy. You wouldn't know all of these things. Renzo, hey. You have a question for Vince? Hi guys. Yes. Hi Vince. Nice to meet you. Uh, you said you said about uh, about speed, and this question is about uh, the the end of the conversion when they come on the discovery call and we sell the high ticket program. So I don't know if it's the right time to ask you. Or we want to wait for later since we are talking about our content. Hold on one second. It's kind of muffled. I'm having a hard time understanding uh, what you're saying. I have to get closer to the mic probably i wasn't predicting it can you hear me better a little better but it slowed down just a tad i was hard kind of got muffled then i have to do abs and really reach for the mic it's far away can you can you hear me better that's better that's better Sorry okay about that. so or i can switch to wait just a second maybe You're okay can... okay i got you now okay you should hear me better um the, the the question is for the speed and is uh we we have an offer for a, a therapist she's a psychologist an online therapist and uh, we are very fast in getting results that normally people take they like a decade to get but we have a solution that can get people to that level of like reducing anxiety panic attacks things like that in uh, about 90 days and get about 70 to 80 percent of the results that other therapists get and we said, well, this is a really valuable thing, like a really valuable benefit to get speed. What happened is that people are kind of scared of changing that much, that quick. Either I'm not speaking with the right people because I'm trying to attract entrepreneurs, but I'm attracting like normal B2C people, or there is something weird going on and people don't really get the value out of it. They are actually a bit scared. So I'm curious to, to know your take on it. So they're a bit scared of getting the result that fast? That's what yeah, you're saying? They, they, they verbally say, communicate, no, no, I don't want that fast. <laughs> so uh, since the high ticket is the only benefit that we could think of is the speed of it, to charge that much in that amount of time. And you said and that it's- They are not responding. You said that you're helping them like get rid of anxiety and stuff? Yeah. Like, okay, so, and they don't want to get rid of their anxiety fast? Pretty much. They are scared to change too much. I think they attract people there. So why? Did you ask them why they don't want to get rid of their anxiety? I don't do the sales, no. I have to, to say to ask them, yeah. It's actually, my, my well, wife was... My, that would be my answer to you. Ask them why. Hmm. I don't know why they wouldn't want to get rid of their anxiety fast. What are the problems that the anxiety is causing them? So I think that the, the answer to a lot of people is, is more questions. Right, you're not. You, well, we and, and I'll be real with you. 
you never really want to like tell a person to say, to do something or to say something. You want what you want to do is formulate questions to get them to tell you why they need something and want something, right? So if someone was telling me and I was a therapist that they don't want to get rid of their anxiety fast, I would ask them why, right? And then I would ask them questions like, well, what is the anxiety? What are some of the problems the anxiety has caused you, right? And then they would list it. And I would say, well, how quickly would you want to get rid of that problem? And then they would tell me. And then some told me, some told me that it would be like um, disruptive for their life and business. Too much change. They are afraid of too much change. I remember now. And then I would ask them why. Mm. And then I would ask them, what is the result that you think would happen if you had too much change? And then I would go, and I'm making this up, and I would say, do you think the result of too much change of what you just said would be better than the result that you're getting now? You're trying to think of the thing to tell them, like to say to them, you got to just keep asking more. You got to formulate more questions. Got it. Okay. I know what you mean. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. All right. Well, do you want to go to the next step real quick? Or we have some more questions. Yeah, no, absolutely. So are there certain, are there certain KPIs, like whether we're doing our content or whether you're doing an ad, like your brick wall, like your, your brick wall ad, right? Like the, the slap ad, like what, what KPIs, like, do you, do you tell your students? Like for me personally, like if we're running an ad to like a VSL, um, I always like tell them like click through rate, like at least 3%, like we're talking minimum, like for, for the thumb stop, for the thumb stop. Do you focus on things like that? Or do you just like focus on, you know what, we're putting out these ads, like, you know, this is, this focus, is working, what's not. <laughs> I do have a focus. It's a little bit different. And again, I would not tell anyone, this is what I would focus on. I, I'll tell you what you can focus on, but I, and you can focus on what I focus on, but what you focus on might be slightly different because our businesses might be in different like places, right? So I have a rule. I have a rule that I've had, and I learned it from one of my early mentors who had a company that made 150 million a year, okay? Then he had one key KPI and it was break your records from the day before. What mm -hmm. records, what do I mean by that? How many clicks did you get? How many leads did you get? And how many sales did you get? Now there's some stuff in between that that he would try to break, which we can, which is the obvious, right? Like um, what, how many um, book calls did you get? How many offers did we make? But it, just to keep it simple, it's break your records from the day before, not from the month. So, you, and it, sometimes that number goes low. So for example, let's say I got 20 clicks to my website today, 10 of them I opted in and I made one sale. Then the next day I try to get, I have to get more than 20 clicks and more than you know 11 leads or more than 10 leads and more than one sale. And I might lose. And the next day I'm trying to break that day before's record. So, um, so, and those are, and then what you really want to do, and what I would tell you guys to focus on is one metric. Like you need to find the one key metric that controls your business. For a lot of you, it's book calls. How do you get more book calls than the day before? And what that would do is it would get you to focus in on the things that you need to do to get more book calls. That might be more power content. That might be going live a little bit more to get more clicks to your funnel. I don't like the whole 1.5% of this and that from like, I look at those things, but if I'm just like to keep it simple, like easier metrics that you can focus on, like what drives the revenue? Like for me, it's how many offers, I focus on how many offers I can make, right? How many people can I get in front of my offer? You wanna to make more money, my mentor 100% would say, you need to make more offers, period. Mm -hmm. If you make 10 offers and I make a hundred offers, and we have the same product, same skill set, same business, who's going to make more money? The guy that made the hundreds of offers, right? So you have to figure out what that key um, performance indicator is. I would find one metric that moves the needle for you and just focus all of your attention on that. And then all the other things will work itself out. That's just the way that's if you, to answer your question, how I would do it. Yeah. Does that sound, does that sound familiar to something that I show you guys in one of the very first videos, your solvable problem, right? Like what's your sol what's your solvable problem, right? Like if if you're not clear on what you need to 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 hit in order to get what you're actually looking for, right? Some of you guys will tell me, oh, I need ten booked calls, but then you're asking me next week how to how to do a low ticket offer. 
that's so misaligned with what you told me that you wanted that you wanted to do. And that's why it, it's super clear. Like one, like it's so easy. Like if you just have one clear metric, like what Vince was just saying. I'll and give you an example, it. right? A lot of people don't even ask for the book call. Like they have a book call funnel and they have leads and they don't tell people to book a call. They have lives, they have a social media and they go live <laughs> and they don't tell people even how to book a call. They think having a book like book a call is just having the book a call process in the funnel. So if I were to come on here, I'd be curious, how many people did you tell if you have a book a call funnel to book a call? How many attempts did you make yesterday? How many people do you think literally heard you say, go book a call? If that number was 10, do you think you'd make more money? Yeah. If, you know what I mean? Like, that's the thing what I'm talking about specifically. Like, just having the funnel is anything. Like, a lot of people get a bunch of leads and don't even email their list. They're, oh, they're going to unsubscribe. They didn't want it. You'd want them to unsubscribe. <laughs> I mean, we're laughing, but it's true. But it's it's true. Like, I see, I see it all the time. Like... It's all a numbers game. Like so many of you guys, you know, like that are doing like either the messenger strategy or whatever. Most of you guys just don't have the volume to even make anything happen because you're turning things on, on and off because it, it's not working that first day or the first week. Like this morning, um, one of my, one of my lean on Laurel students, she literally did exactly what I told her over 90 days. What's that? What her solvable problem was I'm going to have 150 conversations in messenger. She had 150 conversations in Messenger. She booked 12 high ticket clients over that 90 day period. But she set out to do one thing, like what Vince said, and focus just on getting those 150 conversations. And she sold 12 high ticket offers in 90 days. That is life changing. But it was simple, right? Everything that she did was to get Messenger conversations. So, so we're, we're also like scatterbrained, like, what he what he's saying is completely completely true. I do this is how I teach you guys here in the program. What is the one thing that's going to move the needle and stop doing everything else that's not? Stop looking at all these shiny objects. Focus on that one thing. If you're not getting enough clicks, how do we how do we get enough how do we get more clicks? Okay, cool. This creative ain't working. Let's try another one. Right? Most of most of us are expecting this one ad to just magically work. Guys, nine out of the 10 ads I place fail. Even for me, nine out of the 10 ads that I place fail. But I do a lot of ads to get my 10 or 11 winners that I have running right now. And I'm constantly testing. It's, it's literally the guy who won the lottery yesterday had to go buy the ticket. <laughs> you got, oh, he got lucky. He won, he won the lottery, he got lucky. No, he went and bought the ticket. You could have went and bought a ticket. Like, this is the problem with the world. Like, everybody, like, they want, oh, we have a fun. No, you, like, make offers. You're not going to make money if you're not making offers. Like, it's really the fear thing. And that's kind of when I came on, I'm like, everybody, turn on your cameras. Like, some of you may not, I don't want to call it out. Like, <laughs> it's, a, it's a muscle. I'll give, you an, I'll give you another story. Like, so I play college football, and, you know, I can make a bunch of excuses why I didn't play in the NFL. But the reality of why I didn't get to the NFL was it started back in like junior, like in high, in junior high, the way I practiced. I didn't push myself. I would do just enough to be first. I never pushed myself. Like I got, I remember I had a coach. He's like, Vince, you better practice harder. Like, I know you're gifted or whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm too cool for school, right? I'm getting a scholarship, whatever. I got to college day one at practice. I knew that I wasn't getting to the next level. Not because I didn't have the skill level. I just saw how they worked. And that wasn't a muscle that I could just turn on. You, I couldn't just say, oh, now I'm gonna work harder. How many of you guys ever been in the gym and you're working out and it starts, the lactic acid starts to build up and you go, ah, you put the weight down. Mm -hmm. Raise your hand if you ever experienced that. You jogged, you got your, your leg got tired. Now I want you to ask yourself this question. Do you think you could have done another rep when you put the weight down? And do you think you could have kept running another 30 or 15 or, or 40 seconds or whatever? The answer is always yes. That is what it takes to be successful. So all of you guys that have the camera up, I know I'm digging it, it's just an example. If the reason is I just don't want to do it, I'm bored. Well, all of a sudden, when you're successful, then you're going to show yourself, you're going to still be nervous. Like you're still going to have that. You can't just turn that muscle on. You got like everything that I teach, you got to like start to prepare now and build those muscles and do the things that are uncomfortable. So for example, to make more offers, send an email today when you get off of this and make an offer and tell your list to book a call. Go live and tell people what you do and tell them to book a call and do that every single Tuesday. 
Now you just gave yourself at least one more chance to tell people to book a call or buy your product. Commit to that, right? But if you're if you're sitting back now, like afraid to even do anything, then what makes you think you're gonna turn that muscle on? A lot of it is not like, it's, a lot of success in business, what I believe is never the X's and O's. Like everybody has a fun or a video, everybody has all of that, right? It's the little intangibles, it's the ability to show up and to do the things that nobody's willing to do. Right? Like people tell Laurel, she's crazy for having a $7 program. Look at the community she's built. But she shows up every single week, every single, multiple times a week for you guys. So again, I'm telling you, I don't believe that the world opens up until you show up. Right? So that's a mental game. That's why personal development is so important in business. You know? So, anyways, I don't want to go on a side tangent, but I'm just telling you, like, all of the stuff focusing in on one metric and making more money, it's really simple. Make more offers. So before you get off today, figure out what you're going to do each and every day to put yourself in position to make more offers than you made the day before. And then I think that you'll, you'll make more make more money. Let me, let me just share one other thing, because it's the most powerful thing um, in terms of the next step. So we got the power content. We understand what we're doing. Think of them as mini webinars. Figure out frameworks. Play show and tell. We all got that. All right, so now you got this audience of individuals that are connected to you. And then that's where the slap ad like can come in. And that's where the ads directly to your offer can come in, like to that audience. And think about how much easier it is to sell. All right, so if you think about your business in levels, like where, where Laurel's like ecosystem of like how that, how that works, that, that's why that works, right? So if you, if you simply in your ads are identifying the problem and telling them you have the solution, and that is consistently hitting the people who are hitting your power content, okay? And you know exactly what, you're, what they're thinking. You know exactly what they went through. This is how you expedite and speed up that process of generating more sales. This is how you put like, you know, fuel on the, um, you know, on, the, on the fire, all right? So just think of the advertising like that. Like the ads get easier, okay, when you know what the people are feeling and want. Like the ad part is easier at that point. And that's the second step. And then the third step, okay, is the actual leads that you're generating. The people that have booked calls. How many of you have had a lot of book calls, people didn't close, and you'd never have talked to them again, again since they said no? Okay. One other lesson, and this is kind of something that is, it might be a little high, higher level, but when you can figure out a way to make more money after people that tell you no, you'll never go broke. This is the part of business that everybody forgets. Most people are not going to say yes. Like most people are going to say no to the main thing. But going back, and this is why I brought the Gordon Gecko thing up and how he made billions. If I have a list, right, of entrepreneurs or whatever it is that you're selling, therapists, people that want to make beats, I know what they're interested in. It's up to you to say, okay, they didn't take my offer. How else can I serve them? hey, I know you said no to my offer yesterday, but hey, I have this friend, and I'm just making this up, Laurel, she's an awesome Facebook trainer. Um, you should check it out. It can definitely help your business. My business wasn't, wasn't a good fit, but you should go check that out. Maybe Laurel said she opened an affiliate program. You're sitting there with leads, but because they said no, okay, which you guys don't say yes to everything that people pitch you either. You're like, oh, the leads are bad. I didn't work, calls aren't working, I can't sell. Instead of doing what Gordon Gecko would do, like I got a list of 15,000 entrepreneurs. Yeah, they said no to this, but let me see what else I could do to serve them. It's kind of like if I was a real estate agent right now and I'm not selling houses, right? I'm not because the market's tanking, but I got a list of a bunch of potential buyers. What else can I provide to them? What other kind of services can I, can I do to, like, to help them, right? Are there solar deals that I can promote to them? Are there something else? My point is, you literally are sitting on money. And this is the difference. Like when you go to these masterminds, these are the things that they talk about in the room where everybody else is so fixated on like what they're doing. And if the person says, no, like, I lost, the leads are bad, Laurel's strategy doesn't work. Like before you came to Laurel, you weren't getting anybody to pay attention. Now you're getting leads, book calls. And because they didn't buy, now her stuff still doesn't work. No, you don't work, right? So like taking ourselves, but like, okay, we are the blame, right? And those are the little things um, that I would say in the, in the funnel. So anyways, step one, the power content. Think of Gordon Gecko. What can I create? 
It gives me an advantage that I know every person that would go through that would one think positively of me and be at least interested or, or kind of be aware of what I'm selling. Two, your ads to that audience. Problem, I got a solution to fix it. Here's where you go to get it. Okay, in between step one and two, you're consistently making offers. How do I make more offers? How do I break my records from the day before? And then that's step three, okay, the equalizer, the way to help you really make money is figure out a way to consistently stay in front of those leads with offers, even if they tell you, you know, figure out something else that can serve them. All right, if you can do those three things, okay, I guarantee you, you'll, you'll make more money. Yep, and everything we talked about is in this program, right? Like if you, like, think about this, super easy, minimum, bare minimum, right? You have your three pieces of power content. What Vince was just saying, right? Let's say you go live. I, I just love video. That's why I talk. It doesn't have to be video. It could be podcast. It could be whatever. But if you're literally just creating this audience here, boosting all of this content to the people who are already watching your, your power content and you're making offers here, like someone tell me how this would not work. If you consistently did this for a year, how would this not work? Someone poke holes in this. How would this not work? Vince just gave you all the answer. The only reason it's not working is because you're not clear on what your offer is, right? Or is not making enough of them. Yeah, are you not making enough of them? Like, like I'm, I'll, I'll mention something that Billy said yesterday because this is gonna lead into a question I have for Vince that I think is gonna be super helpful. You know, Billy yesterday, Billy Jean at the mastermind said, I don't like getting people on a call. He's like, I just like selling the program, like doing a, like something like a VSL and selling the program. He's like, because he's like, if my wife and I get into an argument, you think I'm going to do a really great job on a sales call, right? Or if my salespeople are in a bad place, like they had a fight with their, like their sales are going to go down. And that kind of really like made me think I was like, that is like so true. And this is not saying that you shouldn't book calls, but you guys have to understand that we have more control over our sales process than you guys give yourself credit for. Because I hear this all the time. And Vince, tell me, tell me what you feel. Because I hear this a lot. Oh, the leads that I'm getting are bad quality, right? What's the difference between a true bad quality lead or do you oftentimes think that it's not necessarily the lead that's bad quality. It's just, we're doing a bad job of, conveying what it is that we're actually trying to, to, to say to these people. Cause I hear that all the time. Oh, my leads are just bad. I, all I get is bad quality leads. I mean, I think that it's when, as the business owner, we fail to realize, to humanize the process. Like all of you are on somebody's email list. Are you a bad lead? Yeah, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I don't, I don't I'm know. Serious. Answer my question. Are you guys all bad leads? I don't open my email, so maybe, probably. Right. The, the point is that it's timing, right? Right. Not everybody's going to want to buy at the time at that specific time. That's why everything we talked about is so important. At the end of the day, I truly believe that people buy when you can provide certainty, like that they when they feel certain that they can get the result. So I'm constantly trying to increase the certainty level of my of my leads, but I'm not naive enough to think that everybody, every lead is gonna buy, right? What I'm, what I'm focused on is really figuring out the problem, being clear of the solution and consistently making an offer that will say just this, hey, you have a choice in life. You can keep having this problem or you can have us fix it. You can keep this problem or we can help you fix it. There's many times or as many people that I know have that problem. And then just over delivering once I get the, because well, to me, our rule is like a, a, a purchase and the sale isn't complete until the user is onboarding and getting results. Right. So that is like another thing that's just, you know, going a little bit deeper, but it's consistency. I, again, I, I guarantee you the biggest problem is people just don't make enough offers and they're not really doing the thinking that the business, like we said, and starting, it starts up in the, in the front, right? Like there's always like a trigger point, meaning like the trigger point is where they initially came in contact with you, how that overall experience happened. And just kind of piggybacking off the last part I said, over delivering it and our belief that the sale isn't made until the person's onboarding and getting results. 
why that's important is because that does the most powerful thing, which is get people to say, hey, go look at this guy. Like people always go, how do I get referrals? Do what I just said. You don't have to go like, well, everybody else says a person buys the product right when they buy, which is fine. You know, you know anybody else that can, they haven't even got onboarded or got a result yet. That's cool if you want to do that. I'm not against that. But the way you really do that is stick with them, show up like you guys are showing up now and have Laurel do what she does. And I'm sure you guys say, hey, go check out Laurel. How many of you guys have ever referred Laurel or talked about her? Right? You think that would happen if you got in here and she didn't have any of what's going on right now? Like, it wouldn't happen. So it's, it's just an overall process. And by the way, you don't do all of this in one day. What you do right now is get off of this call, go write down the objections and figure out some more powerful con um, power content and add some frameworks, watch it and say, if I watch this and I, was, and I had this problem, would I find this useful and, and valuable? And create three of those. If that takes you all month, it takes you all month, but do them right. Then you create ads. Okay, I know this person has this problem. I wanna create an ad. I wanna like attack that problem and get them to believe that I can help them solve it and send them to where they can book a call or become a lead or webinar or whatever and create three of those ads and then set that and forget it. And then now you're getting customers. How do I every day email, go live, make more offers? How can I, like, what am I doing to make offers? Get to a big board. On Monday, I'm doing this. Where can, how can I make three an offer? Then when you get an offer a day, how can I make two of those? Maybe I can send a text message when they opt in here. Maybe I can do this. You have to optimize your business and see it. If you know it's about making offers, then you see it, right? And then you get, then that's done. And then in, in the level three, okay, now how do we improve our onboarding process? Now that we have a customer, like how do we improve the value of it? Of it? Like how do we get them better results? How do we serve them better? That's how you, you take advantage of what we just talked about today. Do you have a couple of extra minutes, Spence, to show them eBoo? Yeah. I, would I would love to get them. So remember at the beginning, I said, there's a way to like literally like do this power content strategy, but like on, on steroids. What, like what if you could do a piece of power content, put it on Facebook, but then put it on a landing page where if people watched 25% or even just hit play on it, 50%, you could literally target them across multiple platforms. How many of you guys would think that that would be like super valuable to your business, right? Like if you could not only put this power content, like you, you create this piece of power content one time, put it on one place, drive traffic to it, and you could retarget based on the percentage of watch time. Is that cool? You guys want to see, you guys want to see it? Like this was- so That feature <laughs> we have to put, that feature is not live yet. It's on our dev site. We just demoed you guys because you guys are pro members yesterday. Oh. We're about to be live with that. So um, let me do, here's what I'll say. You can do an eBoop trial for a dollar. You can go to eBoop.com and check it out. But let me give you the big picture, really quick clip note version of what the software is. So this really weird purposely created name of a company is designed to do exactly what you probably, what the heck is an eBoo, right? Because you wouldn't just like what the heck was a Google the first time you saw it or some other company, right? Stands for Entrepreneur Business Owner Online Video. And we're a video hosting platform that basically has built video marketing tools into the video. So one of the things that we are able to do is um, invert a, an opt-in page. So for example, I kind of coined this term brick wall page because everybody's drive stack to a brick wall page, which is your opt-in page. And the average conversion rate on that page is 20%. Right. So that means that you send 100 people to your opt in page on average, 80 of them are not opting in. You can change your headline, change your video, doesn't matter. You're losing 80%. So the question I asked to myself was like, is there any chance that the 80% of people would have potentially become a leader about my product? Clearly, the answer was yes. And this kind of this software was created um, because of the idea of making more offers. Right. So what I did was let me just drive traffic right to my webinar. And then lock and create software that locks the video at the time that I choose, once the individual gets interested and kind of immersed into the, the webinar, and then ask for the lead. And what makes our software different is that the form extends from the video. Okay, it's mobile friendly. What I mean extends from the video, it pops out and fills your whole phone, and the people can basically opt in as if you clicked on an opt-in button on a landing page. So we're the only video hosting platform with that type of technology 
that has an extendable opt-in form from the video that locks the video. They cannot continue watching until they opt in. And what we found was the lead quality was better because we were able to get people that were opting in out of necessity versus curiosity, right? You get to a brick wall page, you don't know what's on the other side. You get to an eboo video where you're right into the webinar, you're watching it and then it locks different lead, right? Now, how are we getting that 80% back? We're getting the 80% back because everybody that clicks just gets to the webinar. They just start watching it. So we don't lose that 80%. So when we started doing that, the math was crazy. We started seeing 40 to 60% to, to opt-in conversions. And then we were like, well, what if we could sell from the video? So we built the ability to do sales pops in the video. So instead of having the person at the end of the webinar or the video go, go down here and book a call and click this button, they could just, the bit, it'll just pop up right from the video and they could buy. Or you could say, click on this right here. If you want to buy while you're like in your pitch, they click the button, the, the, the order form pops and they can buy from the, from the video. All of this integrates with all of your CRM companies, your payment processing, all from one video. So what we did essentially with eBoo was eliminate steps. So that is cool technology. I use it. We've sent almost 11,000 clicks. We've generated almost 6,500 leads. It's converting well over 50%, right? Whereas before we would have got 20% and the lead quality is better. But what I think is what Laurel's talking about, what I showed yesterday, I think that our company is going to evolve more into that into what we're, what we're about to release, which has never been done. So currently right now, when you do power content, that power content builds audiences on the platform. There's nothing that can allow you to build audiences off the platform unless you're doing like a website click audience. The problem with that is if somebody doesn't have cookies accepted, right? We're seeing a lot of pixel issues. So even getting building an audience of people that visit your website or hit a specific page, it's getting confusing. I don't wanna get too technical. But long story short, imagine if you could drive traffic to your video that's getting people to book a call or to your webinar and build audiences just like you do on Facebook directly from the video that you have embedded off of site. So let me give you a practical example. Let's say that you are an e-commerce store, right? And you're selling, I don't know, health and nutrition products, right? Protein, clothing gear, shoes or whatever. And on every product SKU or product page, there's a demo video, the guy walking with the shoes, lady modeling the shirt, and you're watching the video demo on the product page where they can buy. And that's a vi an eBoo video that you've embedded on your e-commerce store. When they hit play, you would be able to build an audience on Facebook and Instagram that you can then run an ad to. When they watch 25% or 50% or 100% of that video, it would build those audiences um, that you could then run an ad to. So a practical way that I would use this is I would go and set up these audiences on all of the SKUs on my website. And then I would go into Facebook and I would set up maybe let's say 25% coupon ads that are automatically set and to display to the people that are watching these videos on my product pages on my website. So a person lands on the website, watches the video of the person modeling the shirt, watches 20, 50%. They then go on Facebook and Instagram and they're served with 25% coupon for that particular product. That's just a practical way. Another way for those of you to more align with what you're doing, you send someone to a video um, to book a call, you're explaining what they get in the book a call. Now you could build an audience when they hit the play button, when they watch 25 or 50% or 75% or 100% of your video that's embedded on your VSL or webinar that you can then remarket to. So that technology is where we're in, we're in a kind of beta, we're testing it on our end. And that was what I shared with you yesterday, um, Laurel, um, on, on that call. Yep. Cause, cause uh, yeah. So, so Javon, he says, so the audience is being built from the video versus the platform. Absolutely. And it's using the API. It's so even the if people, level. yeah. And, and so like, literally like he's fixing it to where like I can get people instead of, if, instead of sending people straight to Facebook to watch my power content, I could create a cool image ad that says, Hey, free video shows you how to do X, Y, Z, right. Embed my power content video onto, and what I do is I, I upload my videos to eBoob and then embed them on in my funnel page. That's the way that I'm doing it, right? And so when people go, I'm able to actually create audiences of people who are watching the video at certain percentages and I'll be able to retarget them on YouTube, right? Because right now I'm only able to, to retarget them on Facebook and Instagram. But now it's gonna get interesting because if I can get people from Facebook to watch my eBoob videos, like my power content, not only does it pop up with the $7 offer, right? Because in all of my middle of funnel power content, I always say, I'm the owner of adcoachingfor7.com, blah, blah, blah. I could literally pop up 
the, the checkout form right there. And then at the end, whenever I'm talking about the $7 program, I could pop up the form there and they could literally buy straight out of the video without ever leaving the, the video, which is freaking cool. But on top of that, if someone's watching that, as Vince adds other platforms, I'll be able to retarget them not only on, on YouTube, but, but TikTok and all of these other places with one video. I no longer have to like put all of my content like everywhere and run all of these ads. I could literally focus on one platform for top of funnel and use all of, and, and use the, the Ebu retargeting audiences middle of funnel across multiple platforms. That's freaking cool. Right? It's, it definitely it definitely is a game changer for people running ads for efficiency because it's on a server level. I mean, you guys watched it in real time tracking over to Facebook. It wasn't like, you know, the, the click happened. Like you could see it happening when they watch it. It's, it's real time. So, you know, have you ever, how many of you guys have ever had something happen where you talking about something and then you see the ad, like an ad and you're like, are they listening to my phone call? Like <laughs> if they're cheap, like something's going on, right? So the way that that works, by the way, is that you've opted in to, um, allowing those platforms to track you, right? So when you visit specific sites and go on certain things on your phone, they Facebook will, will put you in audiences. So the same audiences that you target, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean that you're ready to buy. It just means that you're in that specific audience. The difference is what we're doing is when they land on a specific thing and they're watching a video in the act of buying or a demo video, and then you're served with that ad, okay, it's different. Right. So I land, I'm a boxer. I land on a, a website to buy boxing gloves and I watch the demo video of a guy punching the bag with them. And then I go back on Facebook and there's a 50 percent coupon code off those exact boxing gloves. That is what you'd be able to do if that, if that makes it more practical. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. Yeah. Especially, if, especially for someone like me who love you guys know I love video. Like to me, video is just so easy to sell, like just to sell, sell yourself. And so this is like me and Victor. I think our mouths were watering yesterday as Vince is showing us. And then, and then Vince, even Billy too, Vince drops the bomb. Well, this isn't ready, but it's, it's about to be ready. And we're like, and Billy's like, give it to me right now. <laughs> we all like, we all wanted it because like, we understand, like, if you understand the power of not only being able to retarget on one platform, but getting people to one platform and being able, because all of you guys, a lot of times you think I get this question in the $7 program all the time. How do I use Google tag manager? to retarget people who are watching my videos on Facebook. I'm like, that's not how Google Tag Manager works. But Vince has created a solution for that. <laughs> like, this is cool. Like, like, just imagine being able to focus on one platform for ads and then being able to retarget on multiple platforms based on the engagement of the content. That's like freaking awesome. By the way, this isn't on live yet. Um, we just showed them it'll be live. He keeps having to say that. This isn't live yet. <laughs> I'm actually set up and about to start using it. So I'm I'll, I'll it'll be fun, but we'll be pushing it out with the next over to the user slowly. That's the thing with software. It's a lot of testing. By the way, you you should give Zuckerberg a hand because even to do this has been like a lot of compliance and just it was a very, very long road to get it to this point to working. And we still have to get through a bunch of other stuff to where that's why it's a slower rollout for so many users coming on to make sure we're not doing anything weird or fishy with the, with the software. So what is the difference? I know. So, so the one that, you know, like Victor and I are in, like we get the mastermind, like, which by the way, guys, he sells Ebu for $300 a month. Like I literally sat in a room and presented with Billy Jean yesterday. Like that, that's the qual $300 a month. What kind of mastermind puts you in rooms with like, not only Vince twice a month, like, I mean, I'm, I'm in it, Victor's in it. There's a couple of us that are in it, but like, what, it, what is the difference between the $300 a month? and the light that you just released that they can get a dollar trial. Yeah, so light basically just lets you, um, it's basically for people that have like a VSL or webinar, you get three videos, unlimited, and by the way, there's unlimited videos, um, un, um, well, in the pro, but you get three videos and no overage charges and uh, you get lead forms. So you can build the, the opt-in forms from the video. And that's just for someone that has a webinar or VSL and they just wanna run it. But you guys pretty much get everything. So you get all the training as bonus courses and the mastermind and the retargeting and all that stuff that we're talking about will be in that in that level okay that makes sense and i'll in the replay guys like underneath this video i'll link you guys to to both the the light i i linked everyone to the light in the in the chat by the way that's not an affiliate link i he's not paying me to to for to promote i i just you guys know i don't bring anyone in to teach you guys things that i'm not personally using myself like if you go to the checkout page i think i think my picture's there 
Like I'm a, like, I am a user of this, of this software. And I just had Vince here to not only give some value about like how to, how to cause guys, he's one of the best at doing ads. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys this awesome platform because it works so well with my strategy. Like think about this, right. In the discovery call accelerator, what did I tell you guys? Don't run a webinar or a VSL until you're making X amount of money. This actually allows you to immediately start running a VSL or webinar without having to pay for the, like, without having to worry about those brick wall, like the landing page, right? Like paying X amount of cost per lead. This is the only exception to where I'll be like, yeah, if you want to do a VSL from the start, because people don't have to opt into it till they're already watching it. Think about how powerful that is, right? So this is the only exception. So that's why I had to bring them in and, and, and show, because there's some of you guys that I know are like, I really want to run a VSL. This is like the most budget-friendly way to run a VSL. Well, I can show them a practical way of using it. I can show them, if you guys have two minutes, I can show you my actual VSL and how I use it if you want. Yeah, so you can see please do. We would love to. I mean, I've so, seen it, but I would love to see it again. Yeah, so this is the new one that we just set up, right? So this video is an eBoo video. It's basically, eBoo is a video hosting platform. It's like Wistia or Vimeo on steroids, right? So this is the page and I want you to notice this is my, this is where I send all of my traffic. So it's all about offers, right? So I'm calling out, like if you're using a brick wall page for webinar or VSL funnels, try VC campaigns, it's real simple headline. All right, so I'll play this and we'll just watch before the pop. So instead of sending them a brick wall page, they're landing right on the webinar. So the question is, what is a brick wall page? A brick wall page is a one page website that looks like this. It basically gets placed in front of your webinar or VSL. You know the thing that you actually want people to see that sells your product? Well, here's why it's not helping your business. You see, on average, only 20% of individuals who land on this page are gonna opt in. That means for every 100 people that you send to this brick wall page, 80 of them are running right into this brick wall. And that's why I started using IBC campaigns. IBC stands for in video conversions. And here's how it works. I'm able to drive 100% of all of my traffic directly to my webinar or VSL. I'm able to lock my webinar or VSL at the time that I choose with an IVC lead campaign. These lead campaigns are mobile friendly, they extend from the video, they integrate with 99% of CRMs out there, and we even have an app approved in Zapier. When the user opts in to continue watching, the video continues to play without the user ever leaving the page. And best of all, these videos can be optimized and leveraged for ads. So I'm able to fire a pixel when a person lands on the page, when the form drops, and when the conversion happens. So who am I and why should you listen to me? My name is Vince Reed. I'm the founder of eBoob.com, author of the book, Internet Traffic and Leads. And for over a decade, I've been helping entrepreneurs and business owners generate more leads and sales for their businesses. Check out my results. I sent 10,458 clicks, generated 5,675 leads. That's a 54% conversion rate. Check out Billy Jean's results. He spent $20,000 in a single day on his IBC campaign. And this is amazing, but butter my buns and call me toast because I'm about to fry your brain because the next three AI tools are mind blowing and I'll also show you how to monetize them. Just give me your contact information and I'll send them to you in three, two, one. And generated 2,339 leads at a 50% conversion rate. Douglas James used IBC campaigns and is getting a 13x ROAS on four different ad campaigns. And he's not the only one. Check out who else is leveraging IBC campaigns. People like Justin Sardi, Brian Mancata, and Laurel Portier. On the rest of this video, you will learn how to gain access to the eBoot software, how every single member gains access to my private Inner Circle Mastermind, how you can get over $10,000 in bonus training just for being a member, and I'm gonna unveil some secret bonus features that are gonna absolutely blow you away. And all I ask in return is that you provide me with your name and email to continue watching. <laughs> all right, so that's literally where all my traffic comes to. So if you ask yourself, like, do you think someone would have opted in if I sent them to a brick wall page first or at that point? So there's actually a framework that I use for that. Um, Laurel has the training, she's done it and she can go through it with you. But what I think of is to get the opt-in is I ask myself, what could I say 
to in the before how I, how can I provide value? How can I prove the problem to be true? If you notice, I said this is a brick wall page. This is what happens. I proved it to be true, and then I said here's how 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 it works. How I can fix it. I had people to show that it works from other people, and then I said what else can I say to get you to continue watching? And that's why I'm like okay, what if I gave them bonuses and secret features and things like that, right? So once they opt in, that video continues to play and it's just my normal VSL. So we just inverted it. So that's ultimately what it does. So anyways, in terms of what you were saying, Laurel, that video, they landed there, all those, the, the retargeting can start right when they hit play. So we'll be able to build audiences on top of that, even if they didn't opt in, right? Even if they didn't have cookies accepted when I showed them the video and I could push them back to that offer or something else or a coupon or whatever. At that point, so there's a practical use of what 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 we're talking about when forms extending from the video, so you guys can kind of see how that works. And what was really what was really cool? One, I wasn't expecting to see my myself in it. Yeah. That was really cool. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I made the VSL. Um, yeah. But but one of the coolest things did you notice? Like, you learned something before the opt in, right? There was there there was some things that you were kind of like, oh, like that makes sense. That makes sense. Like it you felt like you were getting a lot of value. And then all of a sudden this form pops up and it's like, I've already invested all this much time in watching this much and I've gotten this much value. Why wouldn't I opt in at this point, right? Do you see like how, how much more valuable that lead is versus a lead that would come in from an opt-in, like Vin said earlier, over someone who's just opting in for curiosity. These are people who like, you saw the call to action. Like if they're opting in, that's a pretty serious lead. That's a pretty high quality lead because they've already sat through the first three to four minutes of the VSL and understand what they're about to get offered. Right. We're seeing 50% um, open rates and 40% click through rates on emails from, since we went to that. So that's the, the biggest part. Not only are we getting more people to the offer, we're getting better people on the back end as well. So that's how that works. Yeah. And Vince has all of his frameworks for all of this inside. Like once you like, you don't just get eBoo. Like, like I said, like Vince is, does masterminds yesterday. He had Billy Jean. He gives you all of the VSL trainings, all of the frameworks, all of like, even some of the ad training and stuff like that. Like it's for $300 a month. I'm like, that's like, for me, that's the best room on the internet to be sitting in right now. And I'm not just saying that, like I'm, yeah, that's I'm like the high ticket. That's if you wanted to be in a high end mastermind, but the other level, like if you're on the 99 dot, the silver plan, you could try it for seven days and you can use it for your VSL and webinar and test the opt-in form and just use it without all the other stuff. And then as you get in, if you want to, you don't have to start where, where Laurel um, and Victor are. Although I do recommend, I do recommend three, $300 to get access to all of that. Like that's, that's the, that's, that's crazy. Like I'm, I'm super, like, I, I'm super happy to pay $300 every month because it's a great room. Awesome. I appreciate you. Yeah. Cool. I know we, we didn't really like it. I was like, I can't like not show them this cool. <laughs> like, I, you, you, yeah. you get, you blew us away with so much value, like off the top, like oh, I, they, had, they had to see the things that you've been, that you and I have been like, you know, talking about and jamming on like over the last, you know, several, several months. It's been crazy. Any other questions I can help you guys out with before we jump off? I appreciate you guys for the time. Hopefully you guys got the $100,000 plus value. Follow what we said and you'll make more money. I know I did. I know I did. Every time I talk to you, I feel like I get $100,000 worth of value. I appreciate it. Cool. Thank you well, so much. All. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you guys. Absolutely. And I'll, I'll link you guys with any links that you guys need, but, uh, do me a favor after this, go and go and tell everyone that didn't come here, like all the value that they just missed. <laughs> FOMO, FOMO. I'll put, the, I'll put the replay up as soon as we have it. And I will see you guys. Uh, I'll see you guys in the group. Appreciate you guys. Take Bye care. Guys.